Hi everyone, my name is Kale, and welcome back to the fifth episode of my captaining series, where I will teach you how to become a great team captain. Be sure to check out the playlist for the full guide and like and subscribe to support my channel. With that being said, today's episode will be covering how you can manage the team with the help of a co-captain, scrim manager, or as a group effort. While it may seem like your sole responsibility, you don't have to shoulder everything on your own. Today, I am joined by the captains of an amazing Div 7 team and one of my favorite scrim partners. Introducing Sofa and Cuber of the Whip Rays. Hey everyone, I'm Sofa, one of the captains of the Whip Rays. And I'm Cuber, the other captain of the Whip Rays. We've been co-captains of this team since the Splat 1 days, and we've learned a thing or two about how to run a team as a team. First, let's talk about benefits. Yes, benefits. We offer health insurance, dental, vision, a great life insurance no, policy. No, no, we do not. We do not do any of that. Oh, really? When did we stop that? I gotta call my doctor. Anyways. Instead, we'd like to talk about the benefits of co-captaining a team. For example, having a partner means you can share the workload. Believe it or not, running a team is very demanding. Between maintaining a positive team environment, arranging scrims, signing up for tournaments, among other things, it can be a lot for one person. That's why having another captain there to share those responsibilities can really help you keep peace of mind. One of the most challenging parts about being a team leader is maintaining control while also acting on everyone's ideas and suggestions. Having a co-captain means that the entire team's complaints, wishes, and demands don't fall entirely on you. There's another human around to help you manage things. Having another voice in your corner is key to making sure the ship is always sailing in the direction you set out on. It also helps to be able to play off of each other's strengths and weaknesses. Knowing what your partner is good at can really help clarify your role on the team and make focusing on that role easier. For example, Sofa here is a fantastic strategist and game analyst, and I excel at communications and team relations. As you can see, there are a lot of things to like about having a co-captain. Here are some things you'll want to keep an eye on, though. Co-captaining a Splatoon team is kind of like parenting. Your children will often have different views and needs that you need to manage. Communication between the parents is critical to managing these needs and ensuring that you're on the same page regarding major team decisions. Do not make promises to your players on your own, even if it seems like a simple matter. On that note, it's also important to make sure that you listen to your players' needs. If they have something to say, treat it with importance. It takes a lot to voice your views and opinions in this kind of team setting, and your players want to feel like they're just as much as part of the process. It's their team too, after all. While having a co-captain makes it easier for the team to always be running at 100%, that doesn't mean that this job is 50-50. If your other captain has 30%, you may need to pick up the other 70. Likewise, if you've only got 25% to give on that day, the other captain should be able to pick up 75. It's important to recognize that running a team is a compromise of energy that makes both of your jobs easier. This is also parenting advice. In conclusion, Splatoon. Splatoon. I couldn't ask for a better team to call my friends and scrim partner. I just love their energy and you can tell right away that these guys can handle any obstacle. I am guilty of wanting to take the entire workload by myself. I didn't want my teammates to worry about anything so they could focus on playing their best. But doing this also put a lot of stress on me. Juggling university, streams, commissions, team applications, scrim and tourney scheduling, and IRL responsibilities was exhausting but I was stubborn. Eventually, the stress caught up to me and I broke down in front of my team. I felt like I failed them, and myself, by being unable to handle everything and exposing myself as weak. My team begged me to rely on them more, and assured me that I had worked hard enough. From then on, they would help in any way they could. To lighten the workload, I assigned my teammate Jam as my scrim manager. I knew that Jam wanted to improve at communicating with people, so I gave him a task that would be challenging but ultimately improve his ability to keep track of conversations and respond promptly. Jam lacked initiative and decision making, so just as Sofa explained, I gave him about 20% of the responsibilities by being a scrim manager. It doesn't seem like much, but this was especially helpful because contacting teams for scrims is more difficult and stressful than it seems. Many teams have their own Discord servers, and some prefer DMs to contact for scheduling. You have to navigate a bunch of places to find the people you want, and sometimes wait up to two days for them to get back to you. 
The process is time-consuming, and with so many people in my DMs for team applications and art commissions, it was increasingly difficult to keep track of everyone. I like things done a certain way, and it took a bit of scuff before Jam got the hang of things, but I'm really glad to have his help, and it even made him more involved in the community. I'll explain more in depth about scrims in a later video, so you can learn how to manage communication and scheduling effectively. Another thing my team helps me with is the post tourney review. Our newest member, Delta, enjoys theory crafting and analyzing games, so he and our teammate Zero will watch replays and take note of any games that we should send to our coaches. At the same time, Jam and I are updating a spreadsheet that keeps track of all of our opponents, where we'll all discuss what went wrong and what we did well to take note of. I used to do all the reviews and documentation alone, but now with everyone on board, the process has become so much faster. Recognize the strengths of your teammates and find ways for them to help you, even if you think it's small. Whether it's with a co-captain, scrim manager, or a team effort, never be afraid to ask for help when you need it. As a team, you can rely on each other, and as their captain, you must remember to listen to your own needs too, so you can be at your best for them. Thank you again to Sofa and Cuber for their excellent segment. My next video will cover the importance of team bonding, playing games outside of Splatoon, and how it can improve your teamwork in competitive. Thanks for listening, and remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified of my upcoming videos, and I'll see you next time.